Welcome, wherever you are in the world, to Oxford, and in particular to St Mary's Ifley. I'm Andrew, the vicar here. This ancient house of prayer, built in 1160, is where we gather during Advent to wait and pray for the coming of God's kingdom. This year, that's not been possible. But God's invitation to us remains to wait, to watch, and to pray for the coming of Christ's kingdom. So this year we have to do things differently, to embody God's invitation to us. Roger Wagner has contributed so much to the life of this church. I'm now delighted to hand over to him at home for the first of these Advent Reflections. No one knows quite when Christians first started to celebrate Advent. The great Jewish festival of Passover was based on the mighty saving act of, of God in rescuing Israel. The Roman festivals like Saturnalia were uh, dedicated to particular gods and their characteristics. So it was natural for the early Christian community as they tried to find a, a pattern for their yearly worship uh, to configure it around the life, death and resurrection of Christ. And as by the beginning, by certainly by the fourth century, um, the great festival of Easter was being preceded by a preparatory season of Lent. So by the 5th century, the uh, celebration of the birth of Christ at Christmas was being preceded by uh, the preparatory season of Advent. During the, the course of this year, COVID-19 has stolen many things. It has stolen hundreds of thousands of lives around the world. It has stolen countless livelihoods. It's stolen weddings. It's stolen funerals. It's stolen many of the ordinary ways by which we mark the passage of the year. The great 17th century Bishop Lancelot Andrews once said that time is a thief stealing our memories, but that the, the seasons of the Christian year force the thief of time to give back what he has stolen uh, and restore our memories of what has been forgotten. We still don't know how far or to what extent Christmas will be stolen from us this year, but Advent is one season that can't be stolen because Advent is defined by longing. The earliest Advent songs that we have, which go back to the 6th or 7th century, uh, are the, the seven so-called Great O Antiphons, um, which were successively sung on the seven Sundays leading up to Christmas. They're called Great O Antiphons because each one begins with the word O, O Sapientia, O Oriens, O Emmanuel, O Wisdom, O Dayspring, O God with us. Uh, and each of them contains the word Veni, come. They're taken, of course, from the great prophecies um, in Isaiah, uh, which has these titles of the, of the Messiah. Uh, and the it's been said that the Christian writer of these antiphons has, though living in the world AD, world where Christ has come, has, as it were, projected themselves back into the world BC, the world before Christ, the world longing for a saviour. Six years uh, or so ago, uh, 
our friend the composer Jack Redford invited Anne and me to the first performance of his setting of the antiphons in the chapel of Girton College, Cambridge. In fact, these weren't just settings of the antiphons, they were settings also of the sonnets written around these antiphons by the chaplain of, of Girton College, uh, the poet Malcolm Geit. And over the next three weeks, we'll listen to three of these antiphons. Tonight, O Sapientia, next week, O Oriens, and uh, the last week, O Emmanuel. And as you hear Jack's music, you'll see uh, the words of Malcolm's sonnets. Uh, and behind these, I've uh, put some of my own images to, to try and illustrate both music and sonnet. Jack's uh, settings of the Latin antiphons are uh, in a kind of plain chant, um, which, like the, the great walls of St Mary's Ifly, remind us that as we keep the season of Advent, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. But then Malcolm's sonnet takes us immediately into a deep reflection on the ultimate source of wisdom and order and rationality. Is the deep intelligibility that we find in the universe just a kind of illusion or do we find it there and respond to it because we have been created by it uh, and because it is at the heart of everything. I cannot speak unless, I cannot think unless I have been thought, nor can I speak unless I have been spoken. As the antiphons become more focused on Christ, they become easier to illustrate. O Emmanuel, the final uh, antiphon, takes us directly to the infant Christ. O Oriens, O Light, O Dayspring, which we'll hear next week, uh, for a painter is, is just full of images. But this first antiphon, O Sapiens, O Wisdom, is more difficult. How do you depict wisdom? Wisdom is certainly something we long for at the moment. We need it as a world, we need it as a country, we need it as individuals. But where do we find it? The Latin antiphon speaks of wisdom as coming forth from the mouth of the Most High, reaching from one end to the other, mightily and sweetly ordering all things. Uh, and as I thought about this, it, it seemed to me I could illustrate it from our altar cloth here at St Mary's. Uh, it was made from a great assemblage of, uh, uh, of different materials, quilted together as a, as a wonderful gift to the church uh, by uh, a team under Helen Saunders Gill, sweetly ordering all things until the final pattern emerged. So that at the beginning of, of Malcolm's sonnet, you'll see a part of my original design, uh, and then the patterns slowly emerging. Then you plunge into the depths of, uh, of Helen's wonderful embroideries. And then there's a brief glimpse uh, of the dedication cross, uh, one of the dedication crosses on the, on the walls of St Mary's that were put there in the 12th century uh, by the bishop dedicating the church um, and which were the inspiration uh, of the altar cloth. Uh, and then finally yeah, you will see the, um, the mosaic centrepieces that I made um, for the altar cloth uh, based on, on those dedication crosses which uh, which were each one was made for a different season uh, of the church year and uh, are used here to illustrate uh, the, the last lines of Malcolm's sonnet where he talks of wisdom coming to us now disguised as everything. 
So as we hear the music and read the poetry and see the images, let these become a prayer. O sapientia, O wisdom, come. Thank you. 